Hello everybody, I haven't made a video in a while and the reason is obviously that uh, uh, the topic of the day, the most important thing on the top of my head is uh, happening in Israel and I have uh, a channel about Germany and EU politics so I didn't actually have a, a natural, a direct connection to it outside of I think over talked talking points and uh, therefore I actually I looked I had a deep dive uh, last weekend into um, what is going on there and uh, what are the dimensions of it um, the, the the overall conflict and not in the scope that I am comfortable with so far and the reason is that uh, the situation is escalating um, there are more rockets uh, being uh, thrown uh, into uh, larger territories of Israel. It's not, it's not just the immediate proximity to Gaza that is under attack, but they have these long-range uh, missiles that are uh, hitting into the, the into the heartland of Israel uh, right now. And um, the the question really to me is uh, how sustainable is the situation, how it is worsening over the over the following years, um, where the weapons come from, um, and so on. And it is not just this ordinary. Uh, how can the conflict be resolved of all and for good because I think at the heart of, of it all uh, the, the center of the conflict is actually a revolutionary government in Tehran uh, that has from its get-go from the revolution in 1979 sworn the destruction of the Western civilization not just in Israel which they uh, refer to as the little Satan and so it's not just about the um, the core conflict between uh, what's usually referred to as the, the Palestinians versus the Israelis and how they, I don't know, sort out their settlements and la la, uh, which you normally hear. Most of you may not know that um, uh, Iran uh, or Persia, as it was called before, used to be an American pro-Western um, country. Um, but then there was a revolution and that's why it's now loved by uh, by the Marxists and the extreme left and they have sworn to destroy what they call the little Satan which is Israel but also the big Satan uh, which is America and also the rest of the Western world. So if you look into it more deeply you understand uh, you will you will see that uh, the majority of weapons uh, they are not uh, they are not homemade by some uh, some Muslims in the Gaza Strip uh, but uh, there is a lot of smuggling going on and there are a lot of terror leaders on the record uh, who have praised Iran for the delivery of all of these destructive materials. As it looks now, I think the weapon arsenal will be depleted in a couple of days. The Hamas has already indicated that they are only willing to continue for, uh, for a few days uh, to come. Um, if provided that Israel would would stop first and so on, which indicates to me that they are running out of their missiles. But the question to me really is, um, how could they build up that weapon stack in the first place? And uh, will the Iron Dome um, hold up to whatever comes next in the next round? Um, of course, now they have uh, trouble to organize new new weapons. A lot of terror leaders have been taken out by the uh, Israeli Defense uh, Force (IDF), um, and uh, of course the, the the manufacturing sites, the the stashes, and so on. They have been destroyed with uh, um, airstrikes. So um, as of now, the cross is sort of cut. And the big problem behind of this uh, continues to remain, which is uh, that there is a revolutionary government that since its uh, inception has sworn the destruction of us all. And with us all, I don't mean the Jews, I mean everybody in the Western world. The, I mean the big Satan, as they refer to it, uh, which is America and our values. So I've decided to make a little unorganized video about this. Uh, just right from the top of my head, this is unstructured. Even though I spent a lot of time in the past uh, days to get somehow organized, but but ultimately I think I will have to drop um, <laughs> that uh, research line because, as I said, the uh, the overall uh, attacks they will probably subside in the coming days, anyways. And I wanted to make a comprehensive video providing thousands of evidence and uh, linking up all kind of uh, sources so that you can see why Tehran is behind uh, what is going on and how the overall uh, conflict that you are usually presented with as the Middle Eastern conflict is actually uh, not the big issue there. Uh, but um, 
the shooting is going to subside very soon and maybe I will uh, be able to use some of that information in future videos but for now I actually just want to um, to, to uh, talk about some um, frequently presented uh, talking points. So first, uh, I am not against Iran as such. If it became Persia again, uh, which is an ally of the Western world, everybody would be fine. Um, and uh, you see this with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has a terrible human rights record, uh, yet nobody nobody uh, says that uh, their government should be removed that uh, maybe one should consider a military operation to kind of remove their government. And this is because they are fighting terrorists that are attacking Western countries, for example. They are cooperating with the Western world. Uh, that doesn't mean that everything there is fine, and I would really hope that Saudi Arabia also becomes a Western-style democracy. You can still live uh, in a Muslim society, you can still have an overall Islamic way of life, um, if you understand and develop um, civilizational uh, tools um, with which you can enable freedom. Uh, those two things don't have to contradict each other and, the, and where they do, I think people may understand at some point that uh, freedom is the better choice and that's also in the interest of your creator to become a freedom-loving, very respectful person that is not constantly into fighting. Uh, the entire paranoia would, would kind of uh, uh, drain out of the, uh, the Middle East. And I think, I think that is, um, that is uh, important also because a lot of uh, paranoia um, historically leads to anti-Semitism. Um, and I, I, I think we have to fight anti-Semitism through other means than ju uh, just to uh, bluntly uh, telling people that this is anti-Semitic and they should shut up. Uh, instead, we should, uh, you know, kind of go to the roots of all of these problems, which I think um, is, is paranoia that shifts with a lot of things. And the paranoia is, of course, uh, built on the assumption that there is there are good reasons for America, for example, uh, to invade your place. And I do understand that you don't want your place to be invaded. So therefore, um, it would be better if your society kind of uh, would um, live up to civilizational standards uh, and would not threaten the communities around you all the time. Which of course leads me to the discussion of the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is that place from which all these uh, rockets are launched. And uh, since 2005, um, that uh, has accelerated. Uh, that was the time when Israel withdrew completely. The settlers uh, who, were, who, who used to live in the Gaza Strip and who are, are Jewish have left. Um, and what was left behind was then taken over by Hamas completely. And uh, since then, it has just been transformed into a constant um, platform for them to, to operate. Uh, their attacks against Israel. And those attacks have um, caused Israel to have a very critical look into uh, what trucks may pass into the Gaza Strip and which uh, trucks come out of it. Uh, there are heavy restrictions on uh, the people who, who live there. They cannot visit uh, people um, who live in the uh, district of Samaria and uh, 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 Judea, um, that's usually referred to as the West Bank in, in your Western media. Uh, they, they are not allowed to travel there. Um, there is uh, the uh, sea blockade, so uh, the fishermen cannot uh, uh, cannot um, ship uh, outside of, uh, as, uh, I think it's seven miles zone um, right now, out of a zone, above a zone um, uh, in the sea, um, and so on and so on and so on. And all of these administrative restrictions um, cause an impoverishment of the population at large. So this is a densely populated area. Uh, it used to be uh, economically valuable, but now it's it's a, an, an entire mess. And as long as people in Gaza cannot get rid of all these uh, Hamas people who are single-minded on destroying their neighbor, it is very difficult to let um, anything into the into the place that uh, can be used for military purposes. So if the people in Gaza would 
get rid of the uh, of their overlords, which are not the Israelis, but which are the Muslim Brotherhood and their their local leg, which is the Hamas. Uh, those are the powerful people, by the way, also in your university. Um, if they could get rid of the actual powerful people in their lives that make their laws, that constantly control their means, um, then maybe uh, it would be easier to have this normal international tra uh, trade uh, and also traffic in and out of uh, your, s your place that enables the prosperity of uh, of your life. So the first thing that must happen is that you have to get rid of a government that is single-minded on destroying other people. So that's the same message that goes to the to the people in Gaza, that goes to the people in uh, in Iran. We have nothing against people who are just ordinary citizens who want to live their lives, who want to to work towards prosperity and so on. And I do understand the hopelessness. Of these, uh, of, of a lot of very young people, a lot of young people who can't make a good living, who have no career prospects, who have absolutely nothing at their disposal, because the only thing that um, is incentivized in their um, in their society, the only incentives they see in their society, are all about fighting. And there is a lot of discussion of why is the Muslim world held back. Okay, um, there is this theory with the IQ and so on, and I haven't even looked into it, but I wager that this is not the main reason, okay? The main reason is that you have a lot of intelligent people, and you can look at these rockets, for example. That's that's rocket science, okay? Uh, you can see in uh, the... Uh, the uh, strategies in the uh, the building of the tunnels and so on and so on. A lot of intelligent people are there, but they are misguided by a single-minded, hostile, anti-Western government. We hear a lot of occupation, 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 but in reality, actually, nobody wants to take away their stuff. Nobody wants to take away their homes. What we actually uh, want is uh, to give them de self-determination. We hear uh, there are terror groups that call themselves Liberation Front. Uh, you know, uh, they want to liberate uh, uh, the, 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 the Arabs and uh, self-determination and so, and so on and so on. And that sounds marvelous. There's even a, a group that's uh, called uh, Yanya Democ Demokratia, I think. Um, that sounds like democracy. So you want democracy and self-determination. Okay, so fine. But it's very strange that the world community is constantly told that um, these people were the first Arabs to create a democratic society. How is it that all the other countries have not created it? And what stops those countries from creating a democratic society first? Um, why am I saying this? I am saying this because I think the two-state solution is a stupid, is a is a, 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 a wrong-headed idea, and that a lot of uh, people, smart people, who are invested in uh, in the terrorism, they either believe in this um, that they can have a second, a separate state, or that they can remove Israel and then by that mean. Uh, create some kind of self-determination that they could not achieve in any other Arab country. But it isn't Israel that stops people from uh, voting um, the right Hamas member into a position of the Hamas, uh, that stops the Hamas from uh, democratization. It isn't Israel that stops the Fatah from uh, democratization. It isn't Israel that stops uh, Egypt from becoming more democratic. It isn't Israel that stops Syria, um, Jordan, and so on and so on from becoming more Western uh, and becoming more uh, self-determined. However, if you go around and ask these people, what is actually holding you back from your self-determination? A surprising number of them will say it is the Jews, it is the Americans, it is somebody else. It is actually the gangsters, the gangsters who actually hold public offices who stop people from self-determining their own future. 
And those people wish that the average citizen believes that it is some sinister outside force that can't be explained as uh, somehow always in the dark. Um, because that's, that's quite convenient, isn't it? And I see this a lot also here in Europe. Um, it's not the Muslims. Um, here we also have pseudo-colonialism. Uh, people who uh, go into old contracts and treaties and paragraphs uh, to find uh, evidence that uh, everything is uh, controlled by America and that our uh, politicians are obviously not serving our interests. Um, there is always this idea that, yeah, maybe it's some outside force. And and then, you know, you go to America and then you ask Americans, oh, is it actually your crappy government that you constantly vote into office that is uh, uh, acting against your interests and is enriching itself? Oh, no, that must be also some outside force. Maybe it's the Jews, maybe it's this person, maybe it's that person. And isn't it strange that we all come together and assume that it is always somebody else, but the people that actually have the offices and actually make the decisions? I think that's very strange. And I think we have to overcome this. Another argument I hear quite often is that, why should I care? It's the Middle East, it's far away. Um, it isn't uh, American interests. Um, and uh, isn't it that whenever Western uh, forces do something in the Middle East, that's to our detriment? And the answer to that is no. Um, American uh, interests are actually your interests. Um, if you are European, for example, or if you are Turkish and so on, uh, you will find that um, a lot of these American interests are your interests. And likewise, if you are American, you will figure out that uh, the, the American troops operating in the Middle East are actually doing your business. It is not about the protection of other countries, even though I make the argument that the civilization of Israel has contributed so much to humanity that in and of itself that would be worth protecting. But uh, that aside, let's just uh, look into um, what the Middle East would look like if those interferences would not have occurred. So we always hear the argument that maybe um, Iran, for example, uh, could have just been left alone. And the idea is that we supported Saddam Hussein and uh, therefore uh, that was a mistake because later we found out he was, uh, he was scum uh, himself and therefore um, we must have made a mistake, right? So uh, alternatively, we should have just not uh, done anything to contain um, uh, the Shia regime in Tehran. Uh, and just let everything fall apart or, or just see how this all pans out and uh, how it affects American or Western values. But well, first, that was before fracking. So the reliance on the Middle East was actually real. And even though the left likes to say that, um, you know, um, economy is just, you know, it's just uh, capitalism and evil and so on. And so you should not take... Uh, 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 you should not uh, take any precautions to uh, safeguard your own economic interests. Uh, you would probably notice a difference in your in your own medical supplies, in your own uh, uh, gasoline prices, your own budgeting, if uh, if it were f uh, for the total cut off from Middle Eastern supplies at that specific period of time. <laughs> but the second more relevant uh, part is that uh, Iran had quite some clout. They, they had uh, this uh, inertia. Uh, there are a lot of Shia Muslims living somewhere else, which uh, heeded the overall uh, revolution in Tehran. Uh, Iraq, for example, is a majority uh, Shia country, and uh, that is why uh, Saddam Hussein, he feared a revolution in his own country in the wake of the uh, revolution in the neighboring country. And that is why he took military action. Now, his own uh, socialist Ba'ath party is most certainly not my darling. Uh, but, um, you know, given that he, he could have been the next domino stone to fall into the power uh, cluster that uh, emerged around Tehran, uh, that's also a scary thought. Now look at the next country, Syria. Syria has about 50% Shia Muslims. Um, chances were that uh, if it had been that the revolution stormed on, um, that uh, those 50% had uh, also then um, bound Syria totally to Tehran as well. Uh, the reality is, as it panned out, that uh, Bashar al-Assad is also an ally and a vessel of Tehran. But if Iraq had fallen and so on, 
those connections would have been much stronger. The control from uh, the uh, revolutionaries would have been much stronger. The clout they ultimately developed would have been much bigger and you would have felt it. So unlike what uh, CNN and ABC tells you all the time, the effects of American intervention were rather positive. If it had not been for that, it would have become like a second Indochina only with much higher stakes. Recently I thought, what's actually the difference between ISIS and revolutionary uh, Iran and I think um, there isn't actually a, a real difference in terms of um, the threat they pose but ISIS would only have been an addition to the threat that is already uh, sitting right in the midst of, of it all. Um, ISIS had an enormous inspirational power and so did the revolution in, uh, in Iran and uh, it is uh, it is necessary and it was necessary to contain uh, such dangers. Um, ISIS could be removed completely in time and if the Western world had acted more decisively, if it weren't for Jimmy Carter, um, we would have uh, probably a prosperous uh, Persia now instead of the uh, Mullah regime of Tehran. So the narrative that inaction in the mi Middle East only has uh, wonderful prosperous results while all American action is just a uh, uh, a precursor for more violence and, and ugliness and the conflicts and is causing everything that's bad. That is a lie. And I hope you realize now that uh, those interests, uh, even though they are far away from whatever place you live probably, um, they are affecting your, your lives as well because um, the money that uh, certain groups can ac accumulate um, if it had not been for the containment, uh, the Shia money from Tehran uh, would have gone into the university like the Muslim Brotherhood money is already going into there, uh, like the Chinese money is already going into the university. So the education of those young woke kids, uh, that would have been even worse. I mean, it's hard to imagine that it could be worse, but um, it can and the media would have been financed by certain people, etc., etc., etc. So I'm not advocating for a military action against Tehran. I'm just saying there is uh, there is a substantial problem still sitting there, and it is not about um, the Muslims in Israel that um, will have the best future, at least in the medium run, if they would become ordinary um, Israeli citizens with normal rights and would just uh, stop the autonomous status altogether for some time. Should other Muslim nations or Arab nations become more democratic in the future, I think it would not be a problem for Israel or they would rather enjoy uh, to cede the territory uh, that is uh, currently mostly Muslim to those other places. I'm happy to concede that Arabs, let's say if, uh, the Arabs in the Gaza Strip, uh, would be happier um, sharing a nation with other Arabs, like for example the Egyptians. But as of now, there are these two obstacles, like this, uh, the, this Hamas uh, people taking hostage of them, and the second would be that um, uh, there is no self-determination uh, living in Egypt either because it's a dictatorship, right? So the best way forward uh, for these people would probably be uh, to, to go through an, a full-blown Israel uh, citizenship and integration and then in the second step when other nations have um, caught up uh, on a lot of measures uh, that then they could uh, integrate into, into different nations. So ultimately what it is about is uh, that um, no, no society can live if, uh, if the leadership is sworn to kill or destroy the neighborhood tribes or the neighborhood countries. If that is the goal then obviously um, it uh, will backfire and the own population will suffer. But the people in, uh, in Gaza, in Samaria, in Judea, uh, they must understand who is actually ruling over them and no society can uh, sustain itself under a leadership that is dead set on destroying others. Um, it will come with repercussions, it will be felt on the ground. Uh, this is what you see right now with Muslims. The smartest people are caught up with um, you know assisting the fight instead of building up something uh, that is worth cherishing. Um, the 
the intelligent people who are critical, uh, they are rather killed off or uh, sometimes they are stopped from doing more conducive, more helpful things uh, for their societies because they want to protect their immediate friends and family and they are caught up by that. And what is holding back Muslim society at large, I think, is by and large that uh, we see these dynamics that the smart people are caught up in other things than contributing ultimately to the good of their own societies. I think that is the main factor. It is not IQ or it is not malnutrition or whatever you may, um, may think of. I think uh, if you look at the Middle East, what you realize is that a lot of people are under, under permanent stress because they are misled into constant fighting. And this must stop. And um, stopping the rockets right now would be a good start. That was it for today. It was unorganized and it has very little to do with my original channel, even though, as I've already laid out, it affects us all. And the interests of Israel are actually also the interests of your place, if you are an American or if you are an Australian or a European.